The following is an excerpt from the novel Promo Cowboy by Barry Fitzsimmons, read by the author. Chapter 17. One thing about Eddie's, ain't got no air conditioning. A likely reason your out-of-towners don't take to it. There's fans overhead to stir up the dust, only it still feels a good 10 degrees hotter inside than out on that sidewalk. I file past them unruly regulars up front, then past Tom the bartender, who calls me out, pointing to my IOU that's pinned to the wall. He rubs his fingers and thumb together and makes a sneer, showing how he ain't got no teeth up top. Reckon his dentures are in the shop. Damn if old Tom don't look like some relic off a pirate ship. Only, guess promo cowboy's more the pirate, since I ain't come in yet to settle up with him. I make a wave and a nod, the contrite kind, and I keep on moving past them empty booths and old dartboards towards the back where Tom keeps that door open for the cross breeze. The only light's what comes through that door, and I get to the alcove next to it where I turn a little corner, and there she sits, on the banquette, in front of a little table, my client du jour. Her suit jacket's hanging on a hook, leaving that lovely shape covered only by a silky blouse that ain't got no sleeves. Looks awful smooth to the touch, like that coffee with cream skin she's got. I'm standing over her, only her head's down, and she's making marks in a little notebook. There's a bottle of bud on that table, an empty long side, plus a shot glass, drained, and an old ashtray, full, with one smoking on the edge. Hey lady, I call out, don't you know how smoking indoors ain't allowed in this city no more? Belinda looks up and I take a long pull off my own Winston, showing my solidarity against the man. Cowboy, she calls out, like I'm clear across the room. Guess she ain't bothered too much over my being late. I make a nod and finger my hat brim. Ms. Justice, love the hat. I tip again. Why, thank you, ma'am. Sit, please. Her lively eyes are all shiny, lit from within like. I settle into a chair across the table from her. Don't you love this old place, she says. It's so real, and it hasn't changed a bit. Ever been here before? I'll make a smile. One time or two. I used to come here back when the avenue was really bad. I knew I'd never run into anyone from work. I turn and give that place a sweep of the eyes, seeing a handful of just out of jail types, plus a couple of old fellas in their VFW caps, and a skinny lady with hair like a mushroom, Tom's wife, who's drinking instead of working. Seems likely true, even now. I look back at Belinda and she's writing some more in that book. Making some adjustments to your marketing strategy, are you? This? She looks up for a split, then down again. I sometimes get a mood to write silly poetry. Ain't silly, not if it comes from the heart. Being back in New York, it's really stirred up some ghosts. She makes one last mark in that book and closes it up, then makes a huff and shuts them blue-green eyes for a beat, tight-like like she's trying to concentrate on something, or maybe not concentrate. Then she looks right at me. So, cowboy, I wanted to set some things straight before we move forward, and I thought we'd be more comfortable here, away from the office, where we can relax and talk. Starting with me. She makes another huff, then lays down a card. I do, in fact, have a history in the TV business after all. So I gathered, I say, laying down a card of my own, only not no face card. She makes it look like she's disappointed. Was it obvious? That first day in the edit room, the way you showed up and sort of took over, right off ordering lunch from out the menu book, ain't no greenhorn does a thing like that. You're not so easy to fool, but yes, I lived and worked here in Manhattan as a sort of designer. Belinda looks up, wistful like. I used to come here for inspiration. Speaking of which, let's get you a drink. She waves with her hand, and old Tom right away comes up with a tin bucket of ice and four long necks stuck inside it. He drops it with a thud on the table. I take it you're buying, lady, Tom says, with a voice like it's been through a meat grinder. He nods my way. Won't serve this fella till he clears his tab. Belinda makes a face, surprised and pleased like. You have been here before. Like I said, one time or two. Excuse me a minute, Belinda. 
I get up, slow like, and lean into Tom's ear. Why you gotta call me out like that, I whisper, in front of my client. Don't make a scene, cowboy, he says out the side of his mouth that still works, on account of he one time had a stroke. You know I'm good for the money, Tom. Sit down, or you won't be welcome back. I do like I'm told, in the interest of keeping the peace. Meantime, Belinda's back to making notes in her little book and holding out a credit card in her free hand. Keep these buckets coming, she says while she rats, and put his tab on my tab. Hold on now, Miss Justice. I'm a fella can cover his own. There ain't no... You can't... I give up on account of there ain't nobody listening. Belinda's scribbling away, and Tom's got that card in both hands, studying it like it's foreign currency. He walks off, and I lean back in my chair. Nah, that ain't right. Not at all. Too late, he's gone, Belinda chirps. Sure know how to emasculate a man, don't you? It's nothing. I'll expense it. It can't be that much. Don't count on it. Promo Cowboy can get awful generous when the mood strikes. I lean back in my chair. Guess I won't stop you from paying that bill, long as you give me a chance to make it up. You'll get your chance, she says, closing her book and leaning on that table again. She looks me right in my eyes. Let's talk about Willie. Figured his name had come up. He told you about us. Ain't like I was asking. Willie broke my heart a long time ago. Sorry to hear it. You ain't got to tell me no more if you don't want. He used me when I was a kid. He brought me in at... She makes a face. At the place. That's just what Willie said, I say. Belinda eyeballs me. You don't know about the place? I make a face and get a thought. How about you tell me? Well, the people who were there, at the place, at the beginning, they don't like to mention it by name. It's a code we all live by, like the Scottish play. You mean all them Shakespeare actors that won't say Macbeth on account of some curse? Maybe we shouldn't talk over it then. No, let's. She takes a pull off her bud. I'm sure you're a little curious. I look out that open door, into the back alley, and all that dirty brickwork. Maybe some. Belinda makes a smile and looks round in a girlish way. I'll give you a hint. I want my... Mapo, I say. Natural is saying, and also with you. Fast forward ten years. I want my... I swallow hard and make my eyes bulge out. LTV? Belinda touches her nose and leans back like she's awful proud. So you and Willie worked on that LTV launch. I bug my eyes again like I'm play acting. Sure ain't no Macbeth. Guess that's what folks mean when they talk about the place. Belinda makes her forehead crease. Come on, you knew all along. I drape an elbow over my chair rail. Maybe. Why so obtuse? You want people to think you're out of the loop? Don't care much about being in the loop or out. Guess I heard all I care to hear about the darn place. Seems like everybody was there except me. Could populate a small country with all them that say they was part of that LTV launch. Ask me, them numbers don't add up. Belinda tosses her head from side to side. Lots of people like to say they were there at the place, at the beginning. But Willie and I really were there. I shake my head. Shoot. LTV. I remember back in them early days how it was all music videos, not like what they got on now. And all them groundbreaking graphics, and them tasty network IDs, and the promos, and the interstitials. Shocked the world, you all did. Changed television forever. I look down at my bud and think back on the time, just out of college I was, getting up the nerve to call myself a producer at one or another of them local stations I passed through out in the hinterlands. Back in them days, I watched LTV like a hawk, and I started sort of borrowing them visual techniques you all used. Only, now, I feel sort of guilty over it. Belinda's face strained some, like she's the one that's guilty. Don't. Dang it, Belinda, the darn place just about makes you and Willie TV royalty. Of a sudden, that woman shoots an arm across the table, dangling a hand out front of me. You may kiss the ring of TV royalty. I play along, taking her long, dainty fingers in mine, only she snatches that hand back and starts talking serious. 
Willie took me off the streets, literally. I was a college freshman, I'm embarrassed to say where, and so frustrated with my meddling parents who were dying to marry me off. Belin takes a long pull off her beer, and I do the same, finishing mine, so she takes another butt out from that bucket and slides it my way, and I get right with it. I was working at this Benetton store in Midtown, bored out of my skull, folding sweaters all day, and in walks Willie with two gorgeous girls. But he starts following me all over the store. Leave this place, he tells me. You don't belong here. Come work for me. I'll show you the world of television. Big promises. And these girls he was with, they were whispering in his ear, egging him on, and egging me on, saying how he's totally legit how I should go for it and I can always get another job folding sweaters if that's all I want to do. They ended up being my co-workers and my friends, sort of. We were the A girls. She looks at me like she's waiting for me to beg for more. I just make a nod. Alright then. Care to know why we were called the A girls? On account of you as tops in your trade, I say. Class A? Well, yes, but also because of our names. Belinda, of course, and Ella. Think I might know her, I say, on account of there's a woman by that name in our trade. Ella Vedica. Folks mostly call her L. El Vedica. Belinda looks up like she's thinking real hard. Let's see, there was Cassandra, and the last one was... She makes a shrug, like her memory ain't so good. Then her eyes pop. Melissa, of course. She makes her little coo like she's proud of herself. Long time ago. Hard to remember names sometimes, I say. Sometimes. Anyway, Willie had recruited each of them off the streets too. One he met at a girly bar. Another he picked up at Fire Island, was it? And the last one was sort of bookish. I'm not sure where he found her. She turned out to be a piece of work though. Belinda tilts her head back. Anyway, Willie would not leave the store till I quit my job and went with him. He was harassing me, stalking me, putting his hands on me like I was some commodity. Don't get me wrong, a lot of guys used to chase me back then. I was thinner and, and younger. Doubt you looked better, I mumble into my hands. I figured, what the hell. I took my lunch break from Benetton, and 15 minutes later I was transformed. I became one of Willie Schubermiller's charming young associates at LTV. Talk about culture shock. Suddenly I was surrounded by all these artists and musicians. Everyone was hugely creative and very downtown and they all dressed the part, like it was some Broadway show. Willie was always hosting company outings or throwing parties for his friends in the business or taking his A-girls out for dinner at 2 a.m. Remember Odeon? Can't say I do, I say, and right away I can see her disappointment. Guess I don't care much over it. Didn't come to talk over old times. Come to talk over some job. He'd buy us all these matching outfits, skimpy of course, and always with the same theme. Christmas, Halloween, Valentine's Day. Our job was to stand next to him and look good. Then word got out how he was using his expense account for a lot of personal business. Things you wouldn't believe. Helicopters, yachts, summer homes in the Hamptons. By then though, I was gone. Belinda takes a rest from her talking and makes a face like she's getting set to go deeper. I force a smile and tip back the last of my second bud. Of course, there were other girls at LTV, but the A girls were special. Don't ask me why, but we idolized Willie. We fawned over him and fought for his attention. We were a bunch of cats, and he was like our pimp, you know? And whenever he made a big presentation, or held a meeting with another department head, or just had FaceTime with someone, he made sure to have one or two of his A-girls with him, dressed like we meant business. Like the girls from that Robert Palmer video. Somebody told me we were the inspiration for that. Yeah, sure, I say. Seen it a hundred times. Of course, we never said a word. We were just there to look good, and to make Willie look good. The other girls seemed to love the whole game, and I went along with it for a while, but then I came to my senses. Belinda takes in a deep lungful, and the cowboy part of me wishes she'd stop talking about all this girl business. Of course, there's another part, deep down, that don't mind it one bit. 
Then, a year or so after the launch, Willie took me to this big presentation with all the department heads, and I was his only piece of cheesecake for the day. All the other A girls were busy with actual work, you know, producing, creating graphics, all the rest. I was producing by then too, and designing on Paintbox. Paintbox? You? No kidding? Please, I was terrible. Anyway, he had this big multi-tiered campaign to present, and he wanted me to walk around this huge conference table every minute or so, holding these signs over my head, marked one, two, three, you know, like the sexy chick does at a boxing match. And he wanted me to wear this pearl bikini he'd picked up at some tart shop. I was like, no way. The other girls would have been, you know, like, fine. They never had the guts to talk back to Willie, but I did. By then, we'd become an item, sort of. Don't ask me why, but we were living together, even though it wasn't what you'd call a real relationship. I look out that door and see how the twilight's coming. Sure wish Belinda'd cut to the chase. So, it was getting closer and closer to the meeting time, and I was standing my ground, and we were just screaming at each other in his office, and not only about the pearl bikini. We were both going off about a whole lot of very personal stuff, and I'm sure everybody could hear us, but you know, he needed to do his meeting, that was his job, and I needed to wear something sexy, that was my job. So we compromised and I ended up in this form-fitting little dress I found about a half an hour before the presentation at Benetton, believe it or not, the very same store I was working in when we met. It was this chartreuse elastic knit job with three-quarter sleeves and a deep v-neck front and back, and the fabric had this sort of shimmer to it, like something Jane Mansfield or Marilyn Monroe would wear back in the 50s. Sexy, but sophisticated. I looked like a million bucks in that dress, cowboy, and it came up to about... Belinda holds her hand out over the floor, almost level with the top of the table. I remember insisting it had to cover my ass. I had hips, you know. I can imagine it, I say, and I realize how the whole side of my face is falling asleep against my palm. But, she says, when I raise my arms to hold those cards over my head, what happened to the hem of that dress? Whoop! She flips her arm back like she's tossing something over her shoulder, right over my ass. I had the distinct pleasure of showing all the corporate heads my cheap cotton panties. She shakes her head like the wound's still tender. Funny, I should have worn the pearl bikini under the dress. That would have made sense. Guess so, I say, hoping it's the end of her tale. Only it ain't. I was supposed to walk around that table seven times. But halfway through the third trip, I started crying, and I just stopped at the other end of the room from Willie, as far away from him as I could get. I slipped out the door, got my things, and left. Never even said goodbye. She shakes her head, real slow lack. There were other reasons, of course. Word was going around how Willie was hot and heavy with one of his other A girls, the one he found at a girly bar. Anyway, a year later, I was off to USC film school. The cowboy part of me wakes up. You went to film school? At Southern Cal? Belinda shakes her head. After one semester, I switched my major. Business. Then I got my MBA at Stanford. Full ride at both schools, thanks to certain circumstances. She takes a long pull off her bud, and I think, here we go again. You see, even though Willie didn't treat me all that well, I did love him, and we... She sort of hesitates, looking at me. Only I figure I've heard enough, and I can't help it but belt out my coughing laughing sound, the one I make when it's time to change the subject. <laughs> sure enough, it stops her cold, and she cocks her head like a pup. You okay? I stand up and make a nod, and I step on out that back door to the little patio they got, and just breathe me some fresh city air. I make a hack or two to keep it legit. And when I come back, a minute or so later, it's like the slate's clean. There's even a fresh bucket of buds on that table, and I sit down and crack me one. Maybe it's time you tell some stories, Belinda says. Don't hold back. Give me all the dirt on Willie. I let a big old huff out. With all respect, ma'am, I don't partake in no gossip like that. 
A freelance should never speak ill over another freelance. It's the eleventh commandment. She lights up another smoke, looking like a cinema vixen from back in the old days. Break it, she says. Can't, I say. Linda draws on that cigarette like she means it, giving me a long look in my eyes. You know what? You're right. Forget Willie. Let's just enjoy ourselves. I feel like having a shot. She waves at old Tom, calling out. You got any sipping whiskey back there? Sure, he yells back. We got Irish, Canadian, Kentucky straight. She looks at me. You make the call. Bourbon suits me, I say. Maker's mark, she calls out. Doubles, neat, and keep them coming. I push up the front of my hat brim. Gotta hand it, Belinda. You're a talent with the help. She makes a smile, a girlish-like one. We all have our gifts. This is fun.